either the skills that they should have, their weak in their certain areas, or other kinds of needs in terms of assistance in getting textbooks and lab fees, and you know how do we deal with that? How do we fund those programs to help those students? So next week, there's going to negotiations are going to continue, and hopefully by Friday there will be an agreement reached in that area and the other areas of the budget, and then hopefully we will be able to vote on a budget agreement on Friday, and uh, then the governor will also sign it. If all goes well, that's what will happen. If all doesn't go well, then we're going to have to continue negotiating so that the state will have a budget because it would be unthinkable to have no budget for this coming year. We don't have the monies to support the uh, unemployment office, the Department of Motor Vehicles. Those offices could start closing down if we don't reach some kind of an agreement before, you know, be, by, if we don't reach an agreement by March 31st. Uh, uh, we have an, a lot of friends who, like my kids, my grandkids, my friends' kids go to colleges, go to uh, schools. Uh, they uh, what? And we took a lot of interview from people, and they don't know enough about American constitutions. They know about like uh, some stuff about you know critical race theory, something like this. But don't, they don't know this the staples. They know this basis of America is constitution. What we c what maybe. A state assembly can do for you know improve this situation. I think we got to get more information out, and I've always believed that grassroots movements can make differences in how government functions. So I believe that we you know need to get information to people, but then they have to respond. And if the budget is not you know reached, then I think we have to start asking people to sign petitions. We have to ask people to write letters to their assembly members and their senators and to the governor. And we have to begin to demand and let people know what the needs are in this neighborhood. So, for example, every day in the past three months, all right, groups have come up to Albany to meet with their legislators. And when they, when they meet, they present what are their concerns, what are the problems that they face, and what do they want the legislators to do in order to correct those problems. Uh, that's how government works. And uh, one of the things that I think is important in terms of making people more aware is by translating the information into lang various languages. Uh, so, for example, information should be translated into the Russian language, into Ukrainian, into Georgian, so that we can reach the people who are out there now, many of the younger people have learned English, and hopefully that's good, and you know, they will be able to you know, understand it in English. But a lot of seniors have not learned English, and a lot of seniors need help in getting that information. So government needs to transfer, to translate its various information into the languages that people in areas like Bensonhurst and Gravesend and, and Diker Heights and Bath Beach are comfortable with. And we've, I've had many bills passed to try to make sure that that happens. Voting, for example, needs to be translated. The ballot needs to be translated into language like Russian. And the Board of Elections, sadly, has resisted doing that. And uh, we made improvement. They, they knew, now have language translations into Russian for many of, much on their website. And I was the one who introduced that bill. But we're still you know, not getting the ballot itself and the machines, which are capable of being translating into Russian, they're not being used to do that. And that's something that's sad and that we have to keep fighting to, to, to make sure happens. Uh, the whole thing is getting information to the people and then having the people communicate with their elected officials. I get letters. I try to answer all those letters. Uh, we have here in my office, as I said, staff who speak Ukrainian, Russian, Georgian, you know, who are able to speak to the constituents in the language that many of these seniors are comfortable in. And uh, so we try to do that on the local level, but it also should be done in terms of what is happening in Albany. There should be translations into Russian. And uh, that, I think, would, you know, make people a lot more aware of what's happening in Albany, both the good and the bad, and 
to have their voices heard on what they think is good and what they feel is needed for the neighborhoods and for the families of the state. And one more uh, question, because we have like uh, now in Russian speaking community, we have uh, immigrants from Russia who uh, one of them like was uh, ex uh, uh, like senator of uh, Russia and he uh, b brought information the September 11 was uh, c was uh, the bin Laden attack on United States was uh, uh, with help of uh, Russian government. He brought some documents here. Can we make, because uh, I personally went to police department that refused to take this information because this guy right now, he's Los Angeles, but he ready to go to United States, to New York, I mean to New York, because it's uh, 3,000 people was uh, died in New York and he uh, ready to b uh, bring all this information to p police or special, or maybe, maybe we, uh, what can we do in this case? Because you know, because it's like, we live in New York and it's our friends, our relatives was died. And if you have such information, should we like to make some investigation about this? What can we do? I think probably the proper course would be to try to get the federal government, you know, FBI, um, you know, even CIA, but that's kind of, you know, they're very, they're a mystery group that nobody knows how to reach them. He went to Washington, he spoke to Washington, Washington did nothing. Yeah, it's, this is a problem that's sad. He should probably try to get the information out to the public. Uh, and then hopefully there will be a public call to start having the proper authorities take it seriously and investigate it. You know, government only works when people are involved in it. Uh, if, if certain information, you know, you have a, a feeling that maybe government doesn't want it to get out. Uh, they don't want to deal with it for all kinds of reasons. You know, maybe because there's a question of national security and they're afraid that it'll cause bad relations with, between two different governments. But, you know, it comes down to something that affects the lives of people needs to be discussed. There needs to be transparency in discussing it. And it needs to, you know, be dealt with to make sure it doesn't happen again. You know, one of the things that is going on right now is the war in Ukraine. And uh, we, are, we see the effect of that very dramatically because there are many Ukrainian families who are coming into this neighborhood. And as I said, you know, we do have a caseworker who speaks Ukrainian. Uh, many of them also do speak Russian, Russian and Ukrainian. So, you know, the Russian caseworkers also can speak with them and communicate with them. But we need to, you know, make sure that their needs are also met because the federal government has arranged for them to come. There are many local social organizations like, for example, the Jewish Community House of Bensoners that are trying to provide services. And uh, they, you know, have come here basically with children and they don't really have very much. They've, I mean, they were given $100 basically to come here. And that isn't going to last very long, as I think everyone understands. So they're going to need to get information out about, you know, what these families need. And then we have to try to provide resources for them. Uh, in this neighborhood, for example, there is a uh, Ukrainian school on Saturdays, uh, which is located in, a, uh, in, a, in a, another school uh, that had closed down. They have space, so they rent out classrooms on Saturdays to a new wave uh, Ukrainian group. And they actually, you know, help develop and foster and, and reinforce the culture of Ukraine. So these children who have been coming from Ukraine, they're used to certain traditions and certain food and certain, you know, holidays. And now they're into a country which doesn't have those, and they feel very lost. So this is one way, you know, a, a group, a not-for-profit group has actually said we're going to set up classes on Saturdays and we're going to devote it to enriching and developing the traditions and the holidays that these children had, you know, grown up and been raised with. And, uh, you know, that, you know, it's, it's private, a private group. It's a, a non-profit, but they're providing a service and government needs to, you know, assist them in every way possible. Because, you know, if you hide things, if you, if you turn your head and pretend it doesn't exist, you're not serving the people. 
So in terms of, you know, 9-11, a terrible tragedy, a national tragedy, a tragedy for New York, government does need to listen to information that someone may have. Now, maybe it'll turn out the information is not correct. Fine. But if it is correct, government has an obligation to direct attention to it, to respond to it, and to make sure that we use it so that that kind of a tragedy will not reoccur.